And welcome back to the Sports Source. UT's bowl scoring history. Pay attention to this one because this looks like a number that could be in play this week or tomorrow, I should say. When scoring 20 or more in bowl games, Tennessee 24 and 8. All right, pretty good. When scoring fewer than 20 points, Tennessee 6 and 17. And I think 20 could be a key number in that game tomorrow. This Citrus Bowl fact brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. Now is the time to plan your March Madness getaway, your spring fling, your summer vacation. ParksideCabinRentals.com. All right, back with Bob, Will, and Josh here. 20 points would appear to be the target zone for Tennessee. Trouble is, only two of Iowa's 13 foes reached 20 points this year. Only one opponent, Penn State, ran for 200 yards on them. No opponents threw for 300 yards on them. Literally, this is a defense that did not have a hiccup, really. When you look at points, okay, there were a couple of games they gave it up, but turnovers, play, they gave a short field to the other team a couple of times. This defense is pretty darn stout. Take a look at these numbers. We've talked all year about Tennessee and big plays, and that was the thing that was missing this year. You didn't have the big plays. 30-yard pass play, or 30-yard plays in general. Tennessee ranked number 49th in, the, in 49 in the country with 28. You see Iowa, number 115, number 133, and they only had 18 all year. But look at 30-yard plays allowed. Tennessee gave up 21. Iowa gave up only eight all year. That is the best number in the country, and they played 13 games. They played an extra game over other people. 30-yard pass plays. Iowa doesn't have any. Tennessee didn't have as many as they did the year before. But look, 30-yard passes allowed. Iowa only allowed eight all year. Again, number one in the country. And what that means is they didn't give up a 30-yard rush all season. Not one bust where a guy ran 30 yards all season. Four rushing touchdowns against them all season. This is a legit defense. Will, will the Tennessee Volunteers be able to move the ball on it? It's some, to some extent, I think you can. I don't think this isn't been but don't break. Um, the key is can they be patient enough to understand that you're going to get three or four yards a gain, tackle, get back up, you have to do it again. That's not something we've seen that's worked out so well for Josh Heupel's offenses so far in Tennessee or at UCF, right? They want splash plays. You aren't going to get them. And the quick stuff they do to the outside to kind of try to supplement the running game, the quick passes to the wide receivers, they're not going to be there either because Iowa's defensive backs get off of blocks probably as well as anybody in the nation. So I think Tennessee can score a couple of touchdowns and move the ball a little bit, but I don't expect this to be a game where Tennessee scores even – four touchdowns or three touchdowns in this game, I think it's going to be ultra low scoring because of how great that Iowa defense is. And let me go ahead and put this caveat out there. We're talking all things being equal. If somebody goes out there and puts the ball on the turf three times, that's a different yes. right. But barring a turnover fest, you get Will's take. Josh, your thoughts on Tennessee trying to move it against this Iowa defense? Yeah, so with Tennessee trying to hit those big plays, Iowa's defensive success against that uh, makes it a challenge. The speed of Dylan Sampson, of Squirrel White, those are probably the first couple of players we'll think of. Okay, well, maybe they can hit some plays, but Nico needs time to be able to get them the football down the field if that's what you're looking for, barring a bust, which they don't do. So that, that is a big concern. Now, even if uh, something happens where they have an, advent, uh, an advantage with their field position, red zone becomes a concern. Are they going to be able to run it down there? Uh, again, the offensive line. So uh, all the concerns that Tennessee's offense had all season long could play into Iowa's defense going. And Bob, now let's now look at it. You're missing bodies off your offensive line. Like Dane Davis is probably going to start. Uh, Jackson Lampley could be out there. Um, on your receivers, you're still banged up there, so you're not. Right. You don't have Thornton. You don't have McCoy. So you're going to have a lot of Chaz Nimrod. Um, your running backs are down to Dylan Sampson and a freshman in Cam Selden. This is a rough game to be going in hobbled. Oh, I mean, it was going to be a rough game if Tennessee, this Tennessee team from 2023 was, would have a hard time against this defense, I think, anyway. But to come in with what you got, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a scary-looking situation, you know, because you don't have any history on Nico that really matters. You don't know how he's going to react to pressure the first time, the fifth time, the tenth time. And and so I think going into this game, it is just a it is just a huge to me complete offensive question mark. Doesn't mean I think Nico's gonna be bad, but here's something else when we're going what you gotta do against this team. Yeah. Tennessee's offense has also been bad this year about the odd 
procedure penalty, holding penalty. Yeah. Okay, say you, you can do these little things and you can move the ball, and they are bend but don't break. Well, if they're bend but don't break and the other team shoots itself in the foot to the tune of five yards or ten yards, ah, there you go. Can this team overcome a penalty like that? Do and it's a team that collects those kind of penalties and has all season. The one variable for this game that I think can be in Tennessee's favor is the tempo. And because Iowa has not faced the tempo like Tennessee's. Also, though, when you look and start timing when Nick goes in, they're snapping the ball at 24 seconds left of the play clock, not 31 seconds left of yeah. the play clock. And that becomes a little concerning for me for Tennessee. They've got to be efficient and have that tempo, I think, to be able to beat Iowa. Joe Milton doesn't throw on the run a lot. We talked about that. Nico has that ability. Mm -hmm. uh, that, there's not a lot of tape of Tennessee doing that this season because Joe is playing the position. Tennessee has an advantage of they haven't seen what Nico can do or what we can call with him at quarterback. Josh Heupel, I'm sure, is coming up with a plan of here's what we can do differently because we have a different player at that position. You wonder how much of the Penn State-Iowa game, that was really their one bad. I mean, you look at the Michigan score, it didn't look good, but Iowa only gave up about 230 yards to Michigan. That was giving them short fields. Penn State's really the only team to take advantage yeah, of that. You wonder, you wonder how much Josh Eiples looked at Penn State, and you would think similarities between Tennessee and Penn State's offense, there aren't a lot. No. That's not something where, oh, we do that. No, not really. Those are kind of oil well, and water. And, and do you get out of some of the habits that I think you've had this season? I mean, Tennessee completes a first down pass for seven yards. Second down is almost automatically a run. Yeah. Okay, can you do that against the team that is going to be hard to get that seven yards to begin with, or do you start changing up some things? Can you change up some things at this point? It'll be interesting to see this defensive coordinator as well because this is someone who's, been, to put it in Tennessee terms, it's kind of a John Chavis, been there forever. People, you know, yeah. viewed as a guru, uh, never has taken opportunities to leave. Um, you would think with the success this defense is having that this is a guy who can pick up on tendencies. So it will be interesting to see what he gains, what we see Iowa do, if they do anything different, against Tennessee. That might be something that other teams look at down the road. I'll be, to me, that's one of the things to watch for is, how do they, do they do anything differently than what they normally do? Because they're a really good defense. But is there anything they pick up on that they see as a tendency and they come back and have mm -hmm. ready for Tennessee? That we're sitting here afterwards next week going, oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. But they have a, an answer to something that Tennessee has success with. I just It'll be interesting to see because you're going to see with this type of defense, it does a good job of exposing, or on paper, it should do a good job of exposing what your weaknesses are. Okay, let's see how Tennessee can do it. That's kind of the, that chess match is interesting. It's also an interesting part of that chess match is I would like to play with six guys in the box and dare you to run the football. Yeah. In the Bryles offense, six guys in the box means run the football. You have the man advantage. I was going to invite that all day long, and we've seen in games like the Florida game, I think at times the Kentucky game until late when they started changing things out, the Missouri game. When Tennessee can't run the ball with six guys in the box, five guys in the box, there are problems offensively. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, yeah. how many points do you really have to score, though? So, like, if you get to 16, 17 points, you feel pretty good about Tennessee's chances to win this game, right? Yeah, Iowa averages 16 and a half points. So if you're over 17, you should feel pretty good. Yeah, you hit that number of 20, you should feel really good. All right. I think the number will show it a little later. That 30 number we always talk about with Josh Eiffel, I think that's... Yeah. Unless there's kick returns and turnovers involved, <laughs> yeah. I think that one's not going to hit there. All right, uh, when we come back, and by the way, keep voting in our poll. Uh, you can get in the QR code. You can go to our website. I want to see this tally out. We only got a couple more segments with that, so vote right now. Uh, when we come back, Iowa's awful offense versus the Vols' new look secondary. Can the Hawkeyes move it against Tennessee? Come on back on the Sports Source.